How to use the NVIDIA Jets Nano for image classification. How to acquire the required training data. How to train the TensorFlow model. And how to test the model. I used the camera capture tool from the NVIDIA AI Hello World repository. I have to start the Docker container, which you can download from the Git repository. So it's here, and then I start the Docker container. I'm using a classifier to distinguish the different nodes the node types, and the data is stored here. Training classifier data. There is a money label text file. In this label text file, there are the different labels defined. So I have nodes from 5, 10, 20, 50 euro, and then background, and the last one is a counterfeit money class. So in total, six classes are defined. And then I use this camera captured tool. So here we are. This is a live video stream from the camera. Then here in the data capture control, you set the data path. And because I already changed to this directory, I just have to choose this one. And then you have to do, get the label file. I select the label file, you see it here, and then you can start. Then there are the different sets, train, validation, test, train, and then you can set the class. Okay, let's make, take five, so five euro node. You set it here and you capture it. And you see that I've already a total of 638 images in this class. As I said already, I have a lot of training data defined already, so we can have a look here. You see there all the data examples of the image, and we can also have a look at them. And you see here, see here, here are my training examples. Different background, different lighting conditions. Sometimes there are two nodes uh, of the same type shown different angle, different distance to the camera. And instead of logging in into the graphical interface, I'm switching to one of the consoles. So here we are, logging in. And then I use um, I call init3, which is a system without the graphical interface. So I switch back to the second console, and then um, we can go to the training. So the training itself is done in this, with this script here. So let's go th uh, quickly through the code. In fact, what I do here is defining how many classes I have. So I have six classes, five, 10, 20, 50 bucks, uh, background and counterfeit money. Then I set the image uh, height and width to 80 pixel. I decrease the size of the image, which is 640 by 480, uh, to 80 by 80 to, uh, yeah, to save memory. Um, and by setting a small, uh, smaller pixel size here, or a smaller uh, size in pixel width, um, I can have a bigger batch size in memory. And then I train uh, two epochs, for, in, for instance. Uh, I, uh, I load the model, which, uh, which is in this case seven. Then if I continue training, I load the model and then just continue training. And otherwise I use transfer learning um, where I load the VGG16 uh, Keras uh, model as a base model. Then um, as you can see here, image net weights are used um, and the top is not included 
you see here that I use in the base model and uh, add two dense layer on top of it. In, in fact, um, three dense layers, 25, 10, and then number of classes, which is six. Um, yeah. And then I start training. I take the trainings data set and validation data set from um, from the data directory, take 5% for validation. Exactly. So, and then, yeah, I use data augmentation, um, rotation, and I change the contrast. I zoom slightly in and out. Um, and it's a, a small translation also. Yeah, and then you compile the model and then you fit the model. Um, Use an atom optimizer and spath categorical cross entropy as a loss function. And then the model is saved. And it's uh, convenient to save it not to the same, but to different name. And then you start the thing. You can see here that in total six classes are trained with in total 3,823 examples. And the labels of the different classes are defined by the names of the different directories. OK, I will stop the training here because I want to show you the inference part. You see that the accuracy is um, roughly 80% now, with um, a batch size of 5 in this first epoch. Yeah, now we reach the 80%. And note that the data is augmented for each of the training examples, as, uh, as random rotation, random contrast adjustment, small um, or slight um, zoom and translation is um, used. Then TensorFlow is started, which will take a while. And then we get the live video stream from the webcam and use the model, the latest model for inference. And then we can put different nodes underneath the camera and see if they are recognized correctly. So now the video capture is in place and we see now uh, bottom right the label of the class that is detected. In this case, uh, case background is detected. You see below uh, there is a list of six elements. These are the, um, uh, yeah, the confidence values or the yeah, the probability for each of the class. And you see in this, uh, in, this <laughs> in this example that class number four, which is in this case background, has the highest probability. Uh, confidence is 24%, 20, uh, which is not really high, but which should be enough uh, to do some inference at least, which is better than chance. So let's start with a node that is usually detected correctly, the 20 euro node. You see now that the second class is selected as the most probable one, which is class number two, the 20 euro note. If I withdraw the money, you see that uh, the background class is selected again and now counterfeit money is co correctly recognized. Can also move the money around and you see it's still classified correctly. Let's also show it again with the 20 euro note. Yeah, it's correctly identified. You see even a quite large rotation angle. Well, now I see <laughs> because it's my finger that was recognized as a, with a or which was somehow correlated with the counterfy images, the training images. Uh, let's see if also the 50 euro note works. Uh, you see already that the 20 euro note class is quite dominant. 5 euro, it's not dark now. We have 50 euro classes correctly identified. It shortly was unsure if it's 5 or 50, which is reasonable. I mean, 50 and 5. Why not? Depends which feature it's using to determine which node it is. So now we have 50 euro correctly identified. And let's see if we can also background correct. Let's see if we can also identify the 5 euro node. You see again, there's a bias towards a 20 euro. As soon as you see a note, or the shape of a note, can be lighting. Now, 
five euro note. Okay, nice. Could be also lighting dependent, depending how the lighting was changed. I tried to use a lot of different lighting conditions, different shadows. But I assume if you would train further um, and change the network setup, it would be much more reliable for sure. So now it's finally the 10 euro note. I had always problems <laughs> with the 10 euro notes. I don't know why. And the 10 euro note somehow was the most difficult to, de to be identified. Yeah, you see, it's classified always as 20 euro. Well, that's life. At some point you have to stop <laughs> if you want to finish your project. The 80% that you achieve. Okay, now see again if we can st uh, finish here with some nice examples of counterfeit money reliably identified, also the 20 euro and the background. These are the most reliable identified classes. Okay. And again, five and 10 euro. You can increase the training data size. Well, five also works. So this is, this is sufficient. 